Hey guys, my name's Angelique. I'm out here today at Twin Lakes Park and I brought with me a 2019 Acura RDX. This is the super handling all-wheel drive advanced trim. It's in the Fathom Blue, so we're gonna go ahead, give you my review. So starting with the exterior features here, right in the front you're going to notice the big black grille, the big Acura emblem. You do have a camera right under there, it fits in pretty seamlessly. You start to get some of those chrome accents. Looking at the headlights, this RDX does have Acura's um, dual eye LED headlights. So you can see in there you actually have seven bulbs. Those are pretty big, I think they look really cool. You also do get the LED fog lights down below. Coming around to the side here. You do get the body colored mirrors, body colored door handles. These are heated and power side view mirrors. You have 19 inch wheels on this model with those silver, silver wheels. It looks really nice with the chrome accent along the bottom. Coming around to the back, Acura's nice big LED tail lights you have. They kind of remind me of like a crab claw. I think they look really cool, make the vehicle look pretty sporty. You do got your dual chrome exhaust tips down there, as well as your RDX and your super handling all-wheel drive badging. Coming over to this side, this model is equipped with the power sunroof, so you'll see you have the black accents on the door, and that goes up pretty nicely to the black sunroof on the roof there. And then just finishing up all around, the big wheels on this SUV, the nice blue color, the chrome accents, makes it look really nice. This RDX slots in right under the MDX, so it's not that giant full-size SUV, but it's a nice size, sporty, luxury SUV. So we're gonna go ahead, dive in, and show you some of the interior features. So to go ahead and dive inside here, this does have the remote keyless entry, the smart entry. So as long as you have the key fob on you, you just go ahead, you reach behind the handle, the vehicle will sense that your hand is there and it will unlock. You can open it right up, and then to lock the vehicle, you can just shut it, and there's three little dots on the top, you just run your finger over that, and the vehicle will lock. Now that we have it unlocked, let's go ahead and jump in. So coming to the door in here, you do start to notice some of this wood-like trim. That looks really nice on this advanced model. It kind of breaks up all the different colors. You will also start to see the gray stone, that gray color. That continues through the interior of this vehicle. This one does have the ELS Studio 3D. That's Acura's premium sound system. So you have 16 speakers throughout this vehicle. You have your standard power window controls, your standard controls for your side view mirrors. You do have a nice little cubby down here to store papers or maps. And then you also get a little cup holder there for you. You do have your seat memory on each of the key fobs. They're actually labeled really nicely, driver one and driver two. So it's really easy to kind of keep organized who's driving and where the seat position should be. So that's nice so you don't have to worry about that. And then right on the door is where you will find your button to go ahead and pop the hatch. So coming to the steering wheel here, you will find a lot of steering wheel mounted controls. On the left side here, you're gonna find a lot of your audio controls. So you can see that normal power button, that is gonna control your audio to turn it on and off. You do have the heated steering wheel, so you have your control for that on the left side as well. You do have your control for your voice command if you would like to dial out or set navigation. And then you have some standard volume control buttons. And then you have the left and right, up and down, and the button press. So that will shift through your radio stations or shift through your songs, mainly just your audio controls there. This button here, the apps and the back, this has to do with the heads up display. So if you do press apps on here, it will bring up your setting menu on the heads up display and then you can use this wheel here to kind of run down through those. If you want to choose a setting, you can just press on it and then it'll bring up that whole menu right in front of you. You can shift back. So with this left side here is mainly your audio and your heads up display controls. Right behind that, you do have one of your paddle shifters. And then behind that, you have your standard knob for your headlights. You do have the auto on and off headlights, so that's really nice. You can just keep it on auto. You never have to worry about turning them on, turning them off. And if you do have your auto high beams on, the vehicle will keep the high beams on and then turn them off if there's another vehicle approaching. So that's a really nice convenience feature to have. So over on the right side here, this is where you're going to find your controls for your cruise control as well as the infotainment system right in front of you. So again, you have another one of those dials. You can use this to run through the screen in front of you. You can check your maintenance, tire pressure. You can also just set it to minimal, which puts nothing on that digital screen in front of you, which is really nice if you're worried about having any distractions on there. 
you can also use your button here and that will just display some additional information that you can turn away and that's kind of just showing that you do have the lane keeping assist enabled and things like that. For your radar cruise control, you can adjust your following distance at which you would like to car follow the vehicle in front of you. You can of course resume and set your regular speed. You can cancel that and then you have your um, road departure mitigation system. Your button is for your button for that is right on there as well. So right behind the paddle shifter here, you do have your standard control for your windshield wipers, but in addition to those regular controls, right on the end you have a little button that says camera. So if you press that, it will actually pull up the bird's eye view camera around the vehicle as well as your backup camera. And then of course you can just go through the different views depending on what you would like to see and you press it again and it'll show you the side views of the car while keeping that bird's eye view and then you can press it again and it will take you right back to your menu. So that's just a really convenient place to put that camera button instead of trying to fit it in the middle console. I think that was a really unique idea to have it right there on that windshield wiper knob behind your steering wheel. I think Acura did a really great job at laying out this middle console. This one does have the tech package and you can really see how much technology is embedded in the way they lay out their middle console here. You do have this nice big screen that pops out of the dash in front of you. It is not touch screen, but that's fine because you actually have a pad that you can run through things just as easily. So that takes out the hassle and distraction of reaching up and trying to use the touch screen. Coming below that, you do have your power knob for that in addition to the power button on the steering wheel that also controls your volume and your pretty traditional buttons here to go forward and backwards through different songs or radio stations. The dual climate control settings here, it is a digital screen. You can of course sync those up or you can have different climate control settings for both the passenger and the driver. You have all your traditional buttons here to control your fan, air conditioning, and then this one does have the leather heated and cooled seats. So both the driver and the passenger have little buttons here for the ventilated and heated seats. And each of those have three different settings that you can very easily run through. Coming below the climate center there, you will find your control for your different drive modes. This is just a nice little button. It kind of flicks and you can see as you change your drive modes, it not only changes it on the infotainment screen in front of you, it also changes it on the big screen up here. So we have snow, comfort, sport, and sport plus. Next to the dynamic mode, driving mode knob there, you do have the option to turn on and off your auto stop engine idle settings. So if you don't like that, you can go ahead and turn it off. And then you have your pretty unique transmission here. It is buttons instead of the traditional shifter knob, but it's really easy to use. You see we're in park right now. The lights will light up to let you know you're in park. If you do want to put it in reverse, you just go ahead and push down on that. You have your neutral and then this big button here is just right for your driving mode. So it's pretty easy to use. It makes sense that it's right under this knob to change your, change your different driving modes. And that follows down nicely to your main control pad here. You do have a button just to go home if you would like, if you're not already on the home screen. You do have your button right here on the right side that controls your different cards. So you can actually, you can actually set different things here, whatever you want to display. We have audio, navigation, and clock. So that's a quick access feature here. You can of course go back and then your right side pad here will go up and down on that little side cards panel on the right and the main pad will control everything in your main menu. You do have to press down on this pad, so you won't really have to worry about accidentally touching things. Once you wanna to go to a setting, you press down on the pad and it'll pull it right up on your screen. It's really nice to use and you do have this resting pad right under the transmission. This is just a really nicely laid out entertainment system. Coming back under your main control pad, you have a pretty large area here for cups and if you want to put cell phones down there. I have my cell phone resting nicely and then there's a plug right here that you can flip the cover up and then you can just go ahead and plug in a phone charger, toss it in there and it stays out of the way. The cup holders are pretty big. You can fit big bottles in there. If you don't have anything big and you just wanted to move up your middle armrest, you can actually just pull the button underneath and you can slide that up. So that gives you a little bit of versatility. If you have um, a shorter arm reach or you're just a smaller person and it's uncomfortable to reach the whole way back, you can pull it up. You can actually still access your cup and your phone, but it just makes it a little more customizable. 
you can easily slide that right back, pull that same button, and you can pop the middle console right open. Now this middle console, it does go pretty deep. It, it is large enough to store maybe some important documents or a wallet or whatever you need in there, but you actually have an additional storage space. So you don't need as much room in here because you have another space in the front, which I'll show you where you can throw maps or you can put more outlets and things like that. So coming across from the speaker here, this is kind of that soft touch material, but it stands out a lot. There's really sharp lines around there that gives depth to the dash. I think it looks really cool with the little bit of wood trim back there. Your speakers do continue. Like I said, you have 16 of those throughout. And then coming down all the different contrasting colors and textures, and then you get to your glove box. This is a little different than some vehicles. You may be used to reaching down and the handles right there, but this one is actually off to the far left side and it's a button. So you just press the button, the glove box will open slowly. Inside you can see there's a separate little compartment to store your manual, so, so it stays out of the way. But overall, this is just a very large glove box. This is pretty dense. It is locking, so if you do put something that you is valuable to you in there, you can close it up. You can lock it right over here and no one can get in there. Over to the passenger side door, again, you see that big silver speaker with the ELS Studio 3D. You do have some more of your wood trims, that gray stone continues, and they get the same storage pocket and cup holder that you have on the driver's side. So with these seats, they are the leather seats and you do get that really cool black stitching and they're the perforated leather. So I think there's a lot of things going on that just make these seats look really sporty. They look really dynamic because you have the bigger perforation, smaller ones, and then it's a solid leather with a black stitching. I think these are really nicely designed seats. They look almost as if they'd be in a race car or something. And then they do make the seat belt that same gray stone material as the seat. So you can see that it kind of blends in with the seat almost instead of being black. So I think that's really unique. I'm used to seeing just the black seat belt. So that was something that really stood out to me in the interior of this RDX. So coming up top here, you do have your pretty standard rear view mirror. You have the options to program different garage openers in there. And then there's also a little power button on here, which you can see for the auto dimming feature. Above that, you have your controls for that big powered sunroof. So you have two different options. You can just tilt it open a little bit if you don't want it the full way open, or if you just go ahead and press that right button back, the sunshade will open automatically the whole way for you. So you can see that's a nice large panoramic sunroof that reaches all the way back to the back seats of the car. So that gives you a nice big open view of the sky. You can of course leave it like that, or if it's a beautiful day like today and you want it to open the whole sunroof, you just go ahead and press the button on the left side and that glass will open right up for you. To close it, you can just go ahead, press the button on the left, the glass will open. And if you want to close the shade, just push the button on the right the whole way and you'll see that will come and close the entire way automatically. Above the settings for your powered moonroof, you do have your standard controls. If there's an accident, you have your emergency controls, as well as your overhead lights for reading or just some extra vision. And then you can go ahead and pop down your standard holder here for sunglasses or reading glasses, whatever you want it to keep up there. So as I mentioned with that original middle console, you get additional storage down here. This I think is the perfect place to store maps or an atlas or just different directions. Or you can also just store an extra pair of shoes up here. I really like little areas like this for keeping flip flops. You can change out after you're driving or if you get somewhere. So this is a nice little rubber pad storage area to have. You do get additional plugs down here. So if you wanted to plug in an iPad or something, you can plug it in, have it charging, toss it right down here, and it's out of the way. So you have your 12 volt plug, you have your auxiliary port if you wanted to play music that way, and then you do have an additional USB plug over there. So jumping into the back seat here, this is the crossover SUV. So you do get plenty of room back here to hold three passengers. On the back of the seats, you will find some additional little storage cubbies. I think these are really nicely designed because they actually have like an elastic band where you can expand it, or if there's nothing in there, it tucks up pretty nicely there. 
In the middle here, you do have your climate vents for the back seat passengers, and they also do get heated seats. So you can see both the left and right side seats have perforated leather, so they do get those heated seats. They each get three settings, just like the front. You also have two additional USB ports back here. So if there are some passengers who need to charge their cell phones, you won't have to worry about reaching all the way up to the front. They have those two, so that brings your total to four USB ports in this RDX. On the doors, that 16 premium sound system does continue with the same speaker that's on the two front doors. You do also get the same cup holder in the door and the little storage cubby. In addition to the two cup holders on either side, you have this middle pull down armrest, which does provide two additional cup holders, as well as just a convenient place to kind of rest your arm if there's only two passengers back here. And of course you get those same really sporty seats, that same leather, the same stitching. They definitely continue the quality from the front all the way to the back. One nice feature about this RDX is you do have almost a flat floor back here. So you can see the middle bump isn't like sticking up. So your middle passenger doesn't have to ride with their knees in the air. And that also makes it really easy if you needed to store something in here that stands pretty tall, you can slide it in and this back seat floor is almost completely flat for you. So of course, one of the main reasons people buy SUVs is for the extra storage and cargo room. What's really nice about this RDX is it does have the hands-free access power tailgate. So if you have your hands full of groceries or kids or anything, and you need to get in this back hatch, as long as you have the key fob on you, you just go ahead, walk around, do a quick kick under the bumper, return your foot back, and the vehicle will open up. You can see how easy and quick that was. You don't have to hold your foot there or anything. That is a really nice hands-free power lift gate. Coming into the back here, you do get nice cargo area. This goes pretty far back. It's that nice soft material. And then on the sides, you get a little bit of additional cubby. So if you didn't want to put something here on this material, you can toss it off to the side. You have a nice little deep cubby area on the left side, but then you also do get some additional double layer storage. If you just go ahead and push down on the handle, you can pop it up one, you get a nice big deep cubby. This is kind of that plasticky material, so you don't have to worry about tossing muddy boots in here or tools or anything. You can see your spare tire is mounted right under that. And if that's not enough for you, you can just go ahead, pop this right up, and you get a really deep storage cubby back there. And then you can also find where your jack is located there. So this back cargo area has really been taken advantage of. They put a nice design in here to give you multiple layers of storage, a lot of different options. If you do need more storage, say you wanna go ahead and fold that back seat down, you will find handles both on the right side and the left side. You have the 60-40 split, so this right side will lower your 40 seat over here, the single seat. You just go ahead and pop that. That folds right down nicely. On the left side, it'll pull down the larger two seats. Pop that, you see those can fold the whole way down with no problem, and then this opens up for a nice large storage area here. So to go ahead and close this back, even though you probably already put all your groceries in there, maybe you just don't feel like touching it. You can actually use that same hands-free, and you can just go ahead and kick underneath, back down, step away, and the vehicle will close completely for you. So now we're gonna go ahead, get this RDX on the road and let you know my impressions of the test drive. I'm really excited to test out the power of this thing. I also will say I'm extremely comfortable driving it. I'm sitting back in these seats. They're the 16 way power adjustable seats. You can really customize it to whatever feels good for you. So as I pull out and start to get this thing on the road, we are kind of on some back roads here and this thing handles very nicely right around these turns, it's holding the road. It is an SUV, but it handles almost like a smaller car. I am driving it in Sport Plus mode. So that just makes it a little more fun to drive for me. We're gonna see if we can go ahead and get it up to speed here. So you can see that's enough power that it almost throws me back in my seat a little bit. This one does have the 2.0 liter VTEC turbocharged four cylinder engine. It produces 272 horsepower. So you're really gonna get that get up and go in this RDX. 
So while we're getting on the road, I do want to demonstrate how easy it is to still use this entertainment system. I pulled my middle console armrest up a little bit and when you're resting it on here, it's actually in the perfect position to rest your hand on this little pad and then use the little touch pad here. This one is equipped with the navigation, so say I'm driving, I can just go ahead over, press down on navigation, and it will go ahead and bring up the navigation, but it does always maintain your cards on the right side there. So as I'm traveling along, you can see that the navigation continues with me, but say I just wanted to go over and check my radio, you just use the little right side pad, you can run through your different settings here, now playing audio, press on that, and that will pull up. We have FM, you can have XM on, or if you have a cell phone connected via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can control your audio that way. So I'm going to try to demonstrate some of those advanced safety features for you. This does have the road departure mitigation, which is your button down here to the left side, but it also has the lane keeping assist right here on your steering wheel. So to ensure that the lane keeping assist is on, you do want to press that main button here and that will pull up the little green letters on your infotainment screen in front of you. You can see LKAS, so that's your lane keeping assist system. To make sure it's on, you just go ahead and press that. You'll see little lanes come up. When those lanes are solid white, it tells you that the vehicle is recognizing the lanes on either side. So strictly for demonstration purposes, I'm going to try to drift over one of those lanes and demonstrate how the vehicle always wants to correct itself. Of course, you would normally always want to keep your hands on the steering wheel, but for this purpose, you can see I took my hands off, I went to drift over that center lane, I get a big orange flashing warning in front of me and the vehicle will physically steer itself back into the lane. That's a super nice safety feature to have. Maybe if you're a little tired, you've been driving for a while, or you're trying to do something on your menu or just anything that causes you to drift a little back, that is a nice little backup feature to ensure that you're staying centered and staying on the road. Now this 2019 RDX, it's been a pretty popular vehicle for Acura. It was named Best New Car for 2019. It's been named Best Luxury SUV for Family. And I can definitely see why. Everything that this vehicle is equipped with works extremely well. Now we do have the advanced trim, so this is gonna be a fully loaded one, but all of the technology in here, all the comfort features, everything has worked perfectly for me and I cannot be happier. So we're gonna go ahead and do a U-turn here just kind of to check out the turning radius. It is an SUV, but you can see, like I mentioned, it handles pretty well. So we stayed in the lines there, turn right around and you're back on your way. So another one of the advanced safety features in this RDX is the blind spot monitoring. It is a little bit different than in some vehicles because Acura in the RDX actually mounts the blind spot monitoring alert light right inside the vehicle so it's not out on the mirror it's right here it's pretty easy to see so what that does is as vehicles are approaching from either side in your blind spot it will light up to let you know that there is a vehicle in your blind spot and it is not safe to cross over those lines again for demonstration purposes i'm going to let some vehicles come in my blind spot show you the light and I will also demonstrate what happens if you do try to turn on your turn signal while there is a vehicle in your blind spot. So as vehicles start to approach from the left side, you'll see this orange light light up, lets me know that they're in my blind spot. And as one starts to approach and I turn on my turn signal, it will flash at me and give me an audio warning. So when you do see those flashing lights and you hear that audio warning, it means do not shift over into that lane. It is not safe. Once the vehicles have passed you, you can turn on your turn signal. If it's silent and there's no beeping or no flashing, it is safe to go ahead and cross over. But of course, you always want to double check using your mirrors. So driving this RDX around, I'm definitely a fan of sportier vehicles and I love that they kind of found that perfect combination of the SUV with a lot of room and that sporty driving feel. 
It really has the get up and go. It handles nicely. And these seats are extremely comfortable. They hug you on the sides. They're nice and ventilated. It's definitely easy to just kind of lay back in here, feel comfortable and get headed to wherever you may need to take this RDX. So with the heads up display, you do have a lot of customizable options. Once you're in your settings for that, you can actually just have it show you turn by turn. You can show speed and turn by turn, which it will show you the speed limit as well as your speed. You can actually put your lane keeping assist and those other things right on there. If you choose that setting, as long as you press the main the same way in your infotainment system, have your lane keeping assist software on, and you can see that that all shows up right on your heads up display. So it's really bright, really crisp, really clean. That is definitely a nice display to get all your driving information right in front of you. So now I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that backup camera for you. Of course, you did have that camera button on the side, but if you also just put the vehicle in reverse, that will pop up for you. You can change around some of the settings, your brightness, change a little bit of your camera view, but we just have it on that backup camera and our bird's eye view. So you can see as I start to turn the wheel, I do have the predictive lines on my straight back camera as well as my bird's eye view. So that shows you where the vehicle will end up. So as I start to back up, I can just turn the wheel. It shows me if I'm going into the spot, you can bring it all the way around. You have your bird's eye view. So you can see I was horizontal that way and it was super easy with those predictive lines to back this thing right up. You do of course also have your parking sensors. So if you do get close to something behind you, it will beep and let you know that there is a possibility of hitting something. So you can see even with pedestrians, as someone approaches, it will show you where they're approaching from, how close they are in proximity to your vehicle, beep and flash for you to let you know there is something behind your vehicle. As he gets out of the danger zone, all of the warnings stop. If you walk straight back up, gives you that same warning. So those parking sensors are really nice to have, not only for parking, but especially with SUVs, you can't always see what's behind you. So that's a really nice backup safety feature, an extra set of eyes for you. All right, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed my review and test drive of this 2019 Acura RDX. If you'd like to check out this vehicle and others, you can stop right off Route 30 in Greensburg, or you can visit us online at smellacura.com.